Venezuela is the richest country in, in all of South America because it is the world's biggest known reserves of oil. But it's a country with enormous disparity in wealth, always has had. Well, this is Venezuela today represents one of those choices. It's straightforward, it's black and white. This is an elected democratic president in Venezuela. It's not a dictatorship in Venezuela. It's an elected president, Maduro. He's been elected by the people of Venezuela and it's them the matter, matter most. So and Nicolas Maduro is the successor to Hugo Chavez. And I noticed in the BBC last weekend, for example, big protest march carried in protest the opposition against the Venezuelan government, but didn't carry any information whatsoever of the even bigger protest in the streets in defence of their government and against an imperialist attack from principally America, but now backed by France and Germany, Britain, Canada, the Lima Group, and all sorts of people who condemned Hugo Chavez when he won and Maduro when he won. They don't support the Venezuelan government and the progressive reforms that they've made. And therefore, there's a logic in their position. There's also a logic in a position that socialists the worldwide need to rally, not uncritically, but rally behind the government, the elected democratic government president, Nicolas Maduro in Venezuela and the Scottish Socialist Party has no hesitation in standing alongside them. And ensuring that the democratic triumph for the people of Venezuela is respected and not overthrown by outside interference. This is another example of regime change. Remember that? Remember Iraq? Bush? Blair? Regime change? They wanted the right to replace regimes the world over. They don't have that right. They don't have that right ever. And they certainly don't have that right proclaiming it as some form of democracy or liberation or freedom. That's an affront to the English language. Hugo Chavez led what's called the Bolivarian Revolution after the famous anti-imperialist Simon Bolivar, who was an anti-Spanish imperialist fighter in the 18th century who liberated Colombia, liberated Venezuela as well. The Bolivarian Revolution, a bit like the revolution in Cuba that Fidel Castro talked about with Marti, the revolution there to free the indigenous peoples of the yoke of a foreign colonial power. That's the background to Venezuela and it's only been since the emergence of Hugo Chavez that the ordinary people of Venezuela have had a government of their own, free from outside influence and free to do what they wanted with the wealth of Venezuela. At least that was their aim and that was their objective. They didn't manage it. In Venezuela, they have problems. They have deep-seated problems, immense problems. And the root of its economic problems is twofold. First of all, it's the sanctions applied by America. Like in Cuba for 60 years, sanctions are a crippling device designed to undermine their economy. So they face American sanctions. And the trouble with the oil that they have is it's heavy oil almost tar oil, they call it. And what happened under Chavez and Maduro, when oil was at a very high price, they borrowed money for social programs, very necessary social programs to feed, clothe, house, and employ the population. And they did so when oil was at $125 a barrel. When it slumps to $25 a barrel, you've got an arithmetic, economic, profound problem in your hands, haven't you? Oh, vast sums of money. And the sanctions on their oil now mean that they're crippled in the very uh, difficult circumstances to try and get themselves out of. And the, the, the belt has been tightened round their throat by the regime in Washington, D.C. And it's not uh, accurate to say that Venezuela is a socialist country. It's not a socialist country at all. It's a capitalist country. The oil might be state-owned by the PDBSA, but it's a capitalist country where the capitalists in Venezuela refuse to share power with Chavez, they refused to share power with Maduro, and it's noticeable, even in the demonstrations of last weekend, the wealthier in Venezuela are opposed to Maduro. They were opposed to Chavez. It's the poor, the people in the shanty towns of Caracas and the other cities who are the staunchest supporters of the Bolivarian Revolution. And the events have to be seen against the context. When Hugo Chavez was elected president in Venezuela, the Americans orchestrated a coup they kidnapped him and took him to an island off the north coast of, Sh of Venezuela when he was the president. And it was only loyal servicemen and in particular the mass of the population in Venezuela 
who made it clear to the Americans they wouldn't tolerate this and they wouldn't tolerate a coup and they wouldn't tolerate any replacement for Chavez that the Americans were forced to capitulate. American imperialism has blood in its hands for Venezuela today because it's had blood in its hands there for 40 or 50 years. That's the picture that's painted February 2019 in context. In Scotland, we see a dichotomy. And I'm sorry to say the SNP are on the other side. Uh, the Labour Party, without the leadership of Corbyn, that's another area where there's a huge conflicted Labour Party. Corbyn's position in Venezuela is admirable, it's correct, it's a socialist position. The government has to be defended. But inside his own ranks, as you well know, from out to get Corbyn, so other people are saying some astonishingly uh, poor conclusions and anti-democratic conclusions. No. Yeah, well, fortunately nowadays, but with the internet, social media, it's easier to find information about Venezuela than it was perhaps in the past. I subscribe to Counterpunch magazine in America is a good source of information. The Venezuelan Socialist Party, their website is in both Spanish and English, which is helpful. But there are left-wing publications that don't rely on the BBC, don't rely on the Guardian, don't rely on the Wall Street Journal or the Financial Times or all those with a vested interest and replacing Maduro with no support of the Venezuelan people behind him other than the rich Venezuelans who would topple all the progressive socialist advances that have been made in the last 25 years.